dog He lived the road too long To break up Love me Live my life And travel through this land Killing and eating dogs in Thailand is the hidden cruelty, the hidden crime against the laws of the country. It is denied by most Thai people who find it too repulsive to contemplate and ignored by Thai government agencies facing huge costs in bringing rural killing places into the modern world and in enforcing the law. The number of dogs is probably many times the number smuggled to Vietnam, despite that trade getting worldwide attention. Dogs are collected in rural areas and cities throughout the northeastern and northern provinces, an area larger than England. Small primitive killing places butcher them to serve to local populations. The vast majority of Thai people do not eat dog, but the minority is big enough to account for many thousands of dogs. This report does not focus on the cultural choice to eat dogs. That is for the Thai people. It focuses on the cruelty and brazen illegality of the trade. Dogs are bought, traded or stolen by collectors. Some operate in the capital itself, Bangkok. They sell them to the bigger butchers in Bantaraya and to the export trade. Small local butchers collect dogs to supply their customers. There is a conspiracy of justification shared by all those involved, the collectors, the exporters, the butchers and the consumers. They demonise their victims as bad dogs, as if that justifies the cruelty. But their lie is apparent in the rescued dogs seen at government shelters. Most are placid, friendly, or just want to be left alone. Many are family pets, eager for a little affection and reassurance. For the Thai consumers, raw dog flesh is available from the killing places like this. It costs around 50 baht, that's about one UK pound per kilo. There is no control, no welfare protection for the dogs and no hygiene rules. Local people can just phone in their order or maybe call in, choose a dog and wait for it to be killed and butchered. It is usually cooked at home but there are places that sell gang shadow, that's dog curry, to eat with salad and beer. Police and Mekong border guards have driven the export trade underground. They have drastically reduced the number of trafficked dogs, but it seems likely that many thousands a year are still being illegally exported, with smugglers most likely to take the chance when prices rise towards Chinese New Year in Vietnam. Thai dog meat traders have responded to police and military pressure by changing tactics and routes. The beautiful cathedral village of Bantarea near Sakonakon in northeast Thailand is still the hub of the trade and a centre for domestic market butchering. But in the words of one key player there, the trade has gone mobile and arrests of small trucks away from Bantarea support this claim. The dogs they get across the Mekong quickly end up in the hell holes of Vietnam, especially Hanoi where they meet a horrifying end and their flesh is sold in street eateries and markets. In a common practice, dogs are killed and butchered in gardens. There is no law in Thailand to prevent this. If you want to beat your dog to death and eat it, that's a matter just for you. Under new laws going through Parliament, this may change with high cruelty penalties and a reiteration that dogs are not to be killed for food. The final outcome, of course, will depend on the willingness to enforce as much as the final wording of the law. I heard stories of this across the northeast and the north. Youths bought a dog, drowned it and cooked it for a group drinking session in Buriram province. A man beat a dog to death to eat as a celebratory meal with a friend in Udon province. 
One of the founders of a dog shelter near Chiang Mai gave me this photograph of Mao, a happy dog, and his easily identifiable remains after he was killed and mostly eaten. Have you known any dogs that have been that you've been looking after in temples that have been taken? Yeah, I had once uh, quite a, a shocking experience. That was my first uh, exposure to, uh, to seeing uh, killed dogs. Children in the temple told us that men have been there and taken away a couple of dogs and have slaughtered them. And we almost couldn't believe it and we went over to the site they showed us and we found a fire and we saw paws of dogs on the fire and remains prepared for being eaten. And then we looked a bit closer and then we saw under the earth uh, some remains of dogs hastily buried. We saw the head of a dog, we saw the skin, the, the fur that had been buried. And I had a bit of closer look and I suddenly realized that I knew this dog, that this was Ma, he was one of my favorite dogs. And I was deeply shocked to find him this way. He was a very cheerful, a very loving dog. This is a case study of one small area in northern Thailand. It is an area not known for eating dogs and illustrates the way that everyday practices are hiding the true extent of the domestic market. No one in the case study objected to the filming. This was just local life and they saw no reason to hide what they, they were doing. This is one of the places they killed dogs, but I have no idea what we're walking into. Somewhere around here is supposed to be a mafia holding centre for dogs. This may be it, but there's no noise. I can't see anything from here. Uh, the only way to find out is going to be to walk in and have a look. Pigs can be used to mask the smell of dogs by smugglers, but here they look like they might be there for slaughtering, and a very primitive form of slaughter it will be too. No big pen of dogs, so it looks like a butcher's place. This is Kun Mo. He runs this killing place. He slaughters pigs and dogs. It is legal to slaughter pigs, and even under new welfare legislation going through the Thai parliament, pigs and other livestock are unlikely to have any protection in these primitive killing places. However, it is completely illegal to kill the dogs, but no one bothers to enforce that law. We have caught him as he is cutting up a dog for sale at 50 baht a kilo. He carries on sharpening his knife as I talk to him through my translator, and he rests his foot on a stock of dog skins waiting for the truck from the skin trade middleman who gives butchers free chemicals to preserve the skins, and then buys each one for 60 baht. The middleman sells the skins to companies which in turn make them into leather products. His stock of skins is important. They show the organized nature of the dog killing business. The middleman sends out his expensive truck with its fuel driver and free bags of chemicals adding to the cost. That is an indication of a network of dog butchers like Mo who cover the costs of the middleman and make a profit for him. The nearest of that network is about 10 kilometers away, Kuna, who is part of this case study. Kudmo says he kills about 30 dogs a week. He is happy to talk about it and show what he is offering for sale. This is normal business. There's nothing to hide here. He agreed to show us where he keeps the dogs, which he either collects or buys from people who take them to his slaughter site. Can you tell us how much he sells the dogs for? Oh, um, 50 baht per kilo. Um, it's like um, just basically take off the skin and then they just chopped it. So the, the price of 50 baht is like including the guts, the, the bones, the, the, the flesh, but not skin. They just basically skin it. Yeah. How do, how do they kill the dogs? What do, they, do they hit them on the head or? Corn. 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 Oh, ha. Um, they said use that to 
grab the dog. I understand how and, they do um, it. And once they hit, it's pre pretty much dead. Mm. Okay. Would he mind if I photographed round that side? The victims are hidden in the killing and after their death. Their flesh is cooked in homes with as little outside interest as any other meal. <laughs> Kudmo wears a protective amulet. I asked him if, as a Buddhist, it protects him from the evil of taking breath, translated in Western cultural terms to killing. He said no, it was not that. He wore it because he did a lot of driving in his business and the roads were very dangerous. This is Kun Nal, the second butcher in this case study. I tracked him down after a family complained that two of their dogs had been stolen and butchered by him. He said this never happened. Kun Nal started killing dogs for food when he was still at school and at this point he had a good business collecting, killing and butchering about 20 dogs a week. Everyone knew about it locally, but despite it being illegal, he had been operating for years. It's the skin. They said they uh, ship this after they cure it, they shipped it to uh, Bangkok and they use it to make um, purses, some kind of, um, yeah, purse, bags, just like the cow skin. The most successful of the dog campaign groups, Stop the Dog Meat Trade, had been trying for a year to get police to raid Kun Nao. Two men, one small local area in a region the size of England, an area not known for killing dogs situated between regions notorious for dog eating. About 50 dogs a week, say 2,500 a year. What is the total for the whole region? Several hundred kilometers away, Bantaria collectors told me they go out in their truck and get 100 dogs a week for small butchers in Sakonakom province. They said they work in packs of similar truck owners, maybe five or six, coordinating their efforts to collect and dodge the police. On the other side of the northern provinces, in San Patong near Chiang Mai, dog curry and barbecued dog is openly on sale to customers who eat it with salad and beer. In a rally in Sakonakom province, the major centre for the dog meat business, 500 traders from 10 provinces arrived with 100 dog collecting trucks to protest against police action to enforce the law against trafficking in dogs and against killing of dogs for food. The men were demanding time to wind down their dog meat businesses. The list of their operating areas span the northeast from Sisakat near the Cambodian border to the other end of Isan on the Mekong border with, the, with Laos. This was dramatic news and linked directly with the collecting of dogs for smuggling. A year later, my inquiry showed intense collecting was still going on, and even more significantly, it showed a far more widespread collecting, transporting and eating pattern. Meanwhile, the good guys were tackling the smuggling problem with determination. At a visible level, politicians, police and border units were going after traders. The effective Thai campaign group Stop the Dog Meat Trade often helped with information. At the grassroots, the livestock department at Sakonakon was offering banter air dog traders ways to start alternative businesses, an echo of the successful scheme that moved opium growers into productive farming some years ago. 
Police at Satuk told local people to stop selling dogs to traders, and mostly they did. The local livestock vets department set up a highly effective warning network to catch traders collecting in their areas. The Thai Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals forced animal welfare legislation before the Thai Parliament. And in the government dog shelters, staff and volunteers cared for the dogs and found new homes for hundreds of them. But no one, except for the Stop the Dog Meat Trade campaigners, tackled the problem of rural butchering despite it being openly practiced. Before we started, so love.